were you kind of uh like almost uh mad or frustrated when you switched from being vegan to wanting to eat more meat and then starting to understand uh, that meat could be farmed in an ethical fashion and, and in a fashion that could actually uh, not only not hurt the planet, but it seems like regenerative agriculture can be a plus for the environment. Were you kind of like, why the fuck did I know about this? This is like, you know why, is this really hit, why is this hidden? You know? like, yeah, like also just some of the health stuff too. I think especially for women, it's like, you want to take care of your fertility? You better eat meat. You know, like you want to take care of like beauty and stuff like collagen, et cetera. You better eat meat like you want. I think especially for women, there's this like mentality that's really naive about diet, which is that you can kind of choose your own adventure and like everything's valid and everything works. Everything and in I'm moderation. Like, What's that? <laughs> I said everything in moderation. Exactly. And it's like, actually, no, I, mean, I don't believe that. Yeah. So I, I that was sort of I, I more get frustrated at, at young women now who are in that journey and are like, Oh, I don't eat this. Or I don't eat that. And it's like, I'm just a big fan of kind of like eating what my grandma ate um, or my great grandma ate um, now. Right. But it took me a, a while to get there. You know, keep in mind, I was a child of the nineties or, you know, like like adolescence in that time. And it was all snack wells and, you know, the, these like horrible fat free things and, and, and nobody saying, Oh, you should eat protein or get fat. It'll help your mood. You know, I also think too, like, women in the u.s have just stratospheric and unprecedented levels of anxiety right and for me the most calming thing for my and what helps me i think stay grounded a lot of times is like a high fat high protein diet it just it keeps you calm it keeps you satiated like i'm anxious when i'm hungry you know i feel like we're, we're not feeding ourselves holistically we're not like we're not nourishing ourselves you know we're not um there's not a deep nutrition we're eating this food that's high in calories, nutritionally bereft. And that's why we all need supplements now too. You know, why didn't our grandparents need supplements? Because the food was far, far richer. In 1950, a chicken that came to market had been alive for 54 weeks. And now a chicken that's sold at a grocery store, a Tyson chicken, two and a half weeks. Jesus, wow. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Right? Yeah. So that chicken that lived for 54 weeks that was far more nutritionally dense than what we get today. And it also had tons of micronutrients that we don't even know what they are or how to track them, you know? So I feel like we've, we've kind of, so I do get angry about just broadly now, I'd say more irate that things like my coaches and stuff back then were like, Oh, you know, cause I always, I always had things like canker sores and, um, and dry skin and really a lot of split ends and, and all that's gone away since I, you know, the way that I eat now has been gone for 20 years, but it, it was like all these little plaguing issues. Um, and, and it's so, and I, and I see, you know, so many women now struggling with like complex and expensive supplement routines. And, and, and also, you know, this is where I'm going to sound like a crazy person, but I use exclusively just like animal fat for my skincare as well. <laughs> we do it. Um, and I have a skincare line that's lard and tallow and beef fat base. It's like the most natural. I don't want to put anything on my skin that's petroleum based. Like that's just a, a like a no brainer, right? I'm not going to put a petroleum based stuff or anything with BPAs on my like large porous organ that surrounds my body, right? My skin. So, but I think that people are so misguided now and they've really chosen to trust kind of big industry with a lot of really key decisions about their lives. And they haven't really questioned what are the motives or thinking you know, behind those organizations and how they structure things, right? So it's like we sort of outsource all of our feeding and care and all these major like food fabrication and, you know, all of our pizzas are now prepared, all of our lasagna is now frozen and all the companies that are doing all that lasagna making and pizza making for us, we're like, that's cool. They totally got us. Like they're watching out for us <laughs> and they're not, mm -hmm. you know, they're not. And we've outsourced this big part of our lives to them with no question that they're taking care of us and they're not. And we're showing the results in our society with our struggle with weight, our struggle with like mood disorders, anxiety, um, and depression. Like these are all diet related. And I think we've, we've, we've kind of like just given this away and without really thinking about the consequences. Have you noticed uh, rubbing your body and animal fat has resulted in like a perfume? <laughs> <laughs> has somebody been like, Oh my God, what, what is that? <laughs> God will love you, your man, a little less so. Yeah, no, um, it's, I put in it, and my dog does like go bananas. But yeah, I actually, um, you know, for a while, I just was using it with uh, coconut oil. Like you can do half and half coconut oil and um, and suet. 
And like, oh my God, you smell like bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I would never use a smoke fat. I just use a clean, natural base fat. So it actually is pretty odorless. Okay. Um, and then you could put essential oils in it, or you can mix it with something like a rosehip oil if you want it softer and have a better scent to it. But there, I mean, these are animals that we share a lot of our DNA with, unlike plants that produce like seed plants, right? <laughs> we don't share much of our DNA with like rice bran uh, oil. So one thing that's like, you actually have a huge absorption. Um, so it's a really awesome technique. I mean, I think for guys too, it's like a, it's a great, it's also really cheap. You can make, you know, a quart of suet for like $6. And mm. so many people are spending $80 on like skincare creams and this and that and stuff. And it's just a fantastic product. But just in general, like where you can find a simpler version that works in your lifestyle, you should opt for it. And yeah. in general, like the, the, I actually got into using the animal fat because I was reading about how, you know, these in the 20s and 30s, uh, we, well, A, we were always long on fat. So I was trying to find ways to do things with it. And I usually start with myself. And I was um, pregnant with my second child at the time. And I had been reading about BPAs in all the cosmetics. And so I started using coconut oil mixed with lard. And now I've transitioned to suet, which is beef fat, um, because the absorption is just amazing. It works really great for my skin. But you know, you 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 it's inexpensive, it's totally natural, it works, does everything it's supposed to do. It's like, why wouldn't you do it? So I started out just trying thinking I sell some more fat to some of these crazy people that use it as moisturizer. And now I'm like one of the crazy people, <laughs> right? Because it worked really great for me. Um, but yeah, I, I also think just um, you know, there's a, a number of different products that we used to make. You used to make toothpaste out of animal fat too, right? So there's lots of different things that we used to do. Soap was all was all naturally um, based on tallow and lard. Um, just, you know, just until 50 or so years ago, there are many ways that we use this like precious because these animals used to be very expensive to produce. So we were watching every single last thing. Right. And so we were very conscious about the whole animal utilization, not like, oh, I'm going to be badass and eat head cheese kind of whole animal thing. But like we were just taking every piece and making it into soap, making it into cream, making it into, you know, shampoo, all those different things we made out of animals. And that was actually more respectful because we used the whole thing. Right. And then it kind of gets us out of this troubling issue that we have now where so many of our cosmetics and, and things we put on the surface of our body are so chemically based.